the long-awaited Season 11 has finally been released, and like so many seasons before it, there have been a number of hints and clues snuck in there. Even after just the first target, there are so many questions. In this video, I'd like to discuss some of these, including the castle sediment, the hunter drones and related intel, and the Season 11 trailer. Firstly, let's talk about the castle sediment. It has been years since the settlement was first attacked by the True Sons, using a weaponized version of DC-62. But to be fair, in-game it's only been a few months. There have been rumors around the castle settlement, but I haven't paid much attention, as there wasn't anything official to back it up. My first thoughts when we were directed there in-game, there is more to the story. We don't need another settlement, we've been fine without it so far. However, it does paint the picture that perhaps the JTF and civilians are doing a little better in DC than we've been led to believe up until now. I've always felt that the existing settlements and even the White House were barely holding on at this point. But if they're able to divert this much manpower and other resources, perhaps things aren't as grim as they've seemed over the last few months in game. However, like I just said, I believe there is more to this settlement. When running around and checking out the compound, you can see a lot of work going on. Comms being set up, electricity, foundations for buildings, farming spots, plus a number of JTF who look like they're just over this shit, and probably should have just called in sick. The underground area seems to have been locked off, but there is another way down there. Heading onto the street you can find this entranceway that leads you directly under the settlement. There are no guards or anything, but there are doors to be opened. It still works in the same way as the settlement, as in you cannot use weapons etc, except there really is nothing down there. I've been through it a number of times, and there's nothing, except for a few unmarked civilians. But back up in the main section, you can find a crafting table and a recalibration station. This immediately struck me as odd, as there are only so many locations that have this, and the other two DC settlements certainly don't. From everything I'm seeing here, the area feels incomplete. Not just because they're currently rebuilding the place, but that there is far more planned for the area in the near future. I feel like a lot of the assets here are just placeholders for the next few months, where eventually this place will be of far greater significance to the story and I'll expand on this idea further a little later in the video. When first jumping into Season 11, we meet Manny for the usual target brief, but then we are immediately sent to the castle to meet Wally. There has been an increase of hunter drone activity in DC, and she has managed to hack into a couple of them, revealing some intel. Now, this is obviously the way that the main comms are going to be acquired this season, but it's good to hear the hunters are still being featured in the story. Anyway, the first two comms we've received through this intel follows a similar path of the intel received in the Chunks Manhunt. What have you heard, Stovepipe? Rumors of outcasts working with rogue agents outside of DC. I spoke with Cal yesterday, and he has assured me that the rumors are just rumors. The report out of St. Louis? A complete fabrication. Nothing to worry about. Even if it were true, it's an anomaly, not a trend. Nothing for you to worry about. What about supplies going through the area? We have alternate routes. There is no danger of shortages, if that's what you're worried about. Hey, you talked to Chunks? I have. I assure you, there are no shortages, and we have more than enough to sustain us. We are in this for the long haul. The first one covers something I discussed in the Chunks Manhunt video. I'll have a link to this in the top right. But essentially, Stokepipe is asking if these rumors are true. Based on the recruited novel, they are 100% true. Yet for some reason, Natalia, or perhaps McManus, is denying it. I want to assure you that this is merely a hypothetical question. Okay. Hypothetically, what would happen to a mortar operator if they were to use a launcher that had previously housed a dirty bomb? Too many factors to consider. Exposure time, amount of radioactive material, amount of transfer. What kind of particulate? It wouldn't be instantly fatal? Of course not. We're exposed to radiation every day. By the time you're showing symptoms of radiation poisoning, it's generally too late. Thank you, Chunks. Why are you asking? No reason. I just like to be prepared for all scenarios. If you're worried about exposure at the plant, you should start taking iodine to protect your thyroid. That's very useful information. 
This to me shows that Natalia doesn't believe what McManus is saying to her about the events in St. Louis. Or maybe her and McManus are just trying to cover this up from their crew for some reason. What's more interesting about this piece of intel is what Chunk said at the end there about taking iodine to help protect the thyroid. The reason this is interesting is because of something that Wally said after completing the Chunk's manhunt. Guess we should start looking for natural sources of iodine just in case. Should probably start eating more fish and seaweed from Mari's exhibits at the aquarium. It took me a few seconds to click when I first heard this. To begin with, I thought this was an unknown name that would become more important over the course of this manhunt, as they don't tend to give names of characters unless there is some sort of significance to their story going forward. But some of you may remember this name come up in one of the classified assignments that came out in year one. This particular one was called Central Aquarium. You can be forgiven for forgetting what this was all about and it certainly had me looking through the others for a bit of a refresher. But long story short, we were there to rescue Mari Singh and a number of other civilians at the aquarium that was being taken over by hyenas. But the rescue wasn't really the significant part. I'm not going to play all of the comms as this could be a standalone video on its own, but the intel from this assignment showed the interaction between Mari and her colleagues. They were short on supplies and worried about what they were going to do going forward when it came to feeding the animals under their care. Everything was locked down. They weren't able to get trucks in and they couldn't simply take the animals away. They contemplated feeding the smaller fish to the larger ones and mammals, but this would only be a temporary solution. Mari eventually acknowledged that the city is full of hungry people and that food is running out. Perhaps the best solution was to honor the animals and provide them as food for the hungry population rather than just let the animals starve to death. But it wasn't just all about killing off the larger animals and feeding them to the people. The aquarium has a sustainable fishing program they have the facilities to provide a communal fishery, a source of food for the starving civilians. This was certainly a big deal at the time, a sustainable source of food, but with everything else going on in year one, it was easy to have forgotten this. However, with the threat of radiation, along with the growing need for food, the mention of Mari and her fishery is no coincidence. She and her aquarium are something that we're going to have to fight for going forward. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to play the trailer and discuss what I think could be important going forward. We got used to winning. To defeating our enemies. Or turning them to our cause. Schaefer is still in a coma, so I don't believe we'll be seeing anything from him this season. I could be wrong here, he may make an appearance later, but I don't think this will be the case this manhunt. But now they have their own alliance led by Sokolova. And if the mastermind of the Black Tusk is coming to Washington, it will be to eliminate the division. That's why she needs Stovepipe. They don't care about the cost. This agent watch scene is something I pointed out on Twitter and Instagram. It shows that there are more than just trophies for the hunters, that they are drawing intel from them. But what? They already seem to know everything about each agent, especially given that Calvin McManus, as the Secretary of Homeland Security, has had all of this information around the Division agents. So what information are they gathering? Somewhat off topic, I'm seriously considering setting up my recording studio like this. I feel it would really put me in the zone. Only who wins. And finally, we have the White House going dark. To me at least, this symbolizes an attack, or at the very least, the DC base of operations is being targeted and brought to its knees. Maybe this is the end of Schaefer due to the power supply being cut. I don't think so though, or at least I hope not. There is a reason they've kept him alive in the story for this long. But I think this could be the answer to all of my questions around the castle settlement. It's probably a bit of a stretch, but that's never held me back before. I think the White House is finally going to come under attack. I've been questioning this for quite a while. The Black Tusks certainly have the overwhelming manpower and equipment to do this. Up until the castle settlement being restored, the White House appears to have been run by a skeleton crew, as the JTF numbers have dropped so low. Perhaps them sending so many people to rebuilding the castle settlement is the reason it's finally being attacked. I don't know, but whatever happens, I think the castle is going to be our new base of operations, even if just temporarily while recapturing the White House. It's still very early on in the Season 11 Manhunt, and I suspect a lot of my questions will be answered and speculations disproved. But let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts around what you've seen so far? 
Personally, I'm loving some of the new gear that's coming out, and I need to update a few of my builds. I expect this season, being the last season of year 4, will go out with a bang, and I'm ready for every moment of it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and Extremis Mullis, Extrema Remedia.